Hello, and welcome to another edition of SMC Live, where I'm happy to have, a, have on as guests uh, Jennifer Atwood, who is the Executive Director of East Somerville Main Streets, and Jessica Eschleman, who is the Executive Director of Union Square Main Streets. And we are here to uh, highlight some of the concerns of small businesses during this COVID-19 uh, emergency. We have seen kind of the small rollout, uh, I'm sorry, the, the rollout of uh, restrictions placed on places like restaurants that were limited to just take out and delivery. And then just this week, uh, Governor Baker uh, has put out a list of uh, essential and non-essential businesses, uh, and the non-essential businesses have had to close. Um, both Jessica and Jen are kind of uh, at the front lines with the small business concerns here in Somerville with their organizations. And I just want to start off uh, asking each of you uh, what it is that you're, you're hearing, um, given you know, who, who you have to uh, uh, represent and um, the, the concerns that, that they have. So why don't we start off with Jen. Thanks, Dave, and thank you for SMC for organizing this and uh, streaming it live for everyone. Um, I, as can be expected, all the businesses are hurting right now. Um, the ones that have been uh, required to close, some of them have closed on their own initiative in addition to uh, the closures that are required. Um, and even if they're considered an essential business, that some of them have decided that for their own safety and for the safety of their employees to close as well. So as you can imagine, a lot of them are hurting in terms of wondering if they're going to be able to make rent this month or next month. Um, a lot of them, I think almost all of them have had to let go of employees, um, which is very heartbreaking for everyone involved. And uh, it's it's tough out there. Uh, some of them, some of the restaurants in particular, have tried to stay open to provide services for delivery and takeout, um, but also acknowledging the fact that um, they they're aware that it's not profitable in order to do that uh, in the long run. That those that have stayed open, I believe, are doing it in order to provide some kind of income for their employees. Um, so. East Somerville Main Streets and other Union Square Main Streets and the Chamber and the city have all been kind of brainstorming together ways that we can continue to promote the businesses that are either changing to a virtual platform or still offering some kind of services through the crisis uh, to keep these businesses going. Um, so I could talk a little bit more about what East Somerville Main Streets is doing and then pass it over to Jess if that sounds good to you guys. Yeah, that sounds great. So uh, what is uh, what is East Somerville Main Streets doing? So uh, what we've done, uh, first thing we did was we started a survey to collect impact information um, that has, hadn't, has had some uh, success in terms of gathering some data. Uh, and almost immediately there was seemed to be a need for information in terms of who was offering services and who was closed because there was some confusion um, in terms of what businesses were open and what services were being provided. So we created a page on our website so people can um, find that information on who's currently offering delivery and takeout and where to order that from. Um, one thing I'd like to mention that even though like a lot of places do offer web uh, ordering through like Grubhub or DoorDash, those services charge like a 30% fee on top of um, the sale costs for these businesses. So if people can um, just call the business directly, it's a little, it's better for the businesses um, in terms of they get a larger amount of the sale um, for those orders. So that's one thing that we were able to do. We've been trying to start the conversation with landlords to see if there's anything that can be done in terms of rent deferment um, or uh, relief of some kind. And we've been also collecting information and resources on the relief loans that have been um, started to, to come on board. Unfortunately, as you can imagine, you know, a lot of these businesses, they can't apply to the relief loans. They're, it's not applicable to them. Either they weren't profitable in the last year because they just opened or because they're operating by narrow margins. Um, 
so it's it's and the Massachusetts one I think was it was out in the day um, so uh, we're seeing a lot of uh, landlords in particular like point the businesses back to these relief loans as a solution to be able to make rent but um, the reality is the loans are not enough to keep these businesses going and paying their bills so we're trying to figure out anything else that might be available um, or coming soon hopefully that would help um, and again like talking a little bit about those part-time workers that uh, have been let go a lot of them don't necessarily qualify for unemployment so there's um additional hardship to be had in terms of like if you are a contract worker or part-time employee oftentimes you're not going to be eligible for for unemployment um so so that's that's uh <laughs> that's my update um i'm sure jess has more to say as well yeah, thank you, Jen. And uh, Jess, uh, what are what are you hearing? And what is uh, East? Uh, I'm sorry. What is Union Square Main Streets doing? Thanks, Dave, and thanks Somerville Media Center for being such a vital resource for our community to keep connected during these unimaginable times. Um, like Jen said, uh, we're hearing the the truth out there is it's tough. It's tough in many many ways. Um, unfortunately, we've already seen some businesses close permanently um, and many more who are very, very fearful that that's indeed what's coming their way next. Um, Union Square Main Streets also issued a survey to understand and to quantify the impacts of our businesses. We currently serve 192 businesses in Union Square. We issued our um, survey on over the weekend, right before St. Patrick's Day, and we closed it at midnight on March 17th. So we have hard number and data, which captures the impacts at the early stages, which I'm going to share with you and your viewers today. But what I wanna underscore is those were the initial responses. So the data sets that you're seeing now, from what I'm hearing and talking to business owners and leaders, um, these statistics are actually becoming more severe. Are we, produced a, a survey, an impact survey for businesses that was modeled after the Central Square Business Improvements Survey. And it's the same survey that was being used by East Cambridge Business Association. And since this point in time, the city of Somerville is also using a version of that same survey. And the purpose for doing that is so that we can collect a data set that shows impacts across multiple business districts, which will enable us to be able to advocate for the emergency relief that is so sorely needed by businesses, um, both to stay afloat and to keep their employees employed to the best of their ability. So as of March 18th, 100% uh, of our businesses who replied, that 65 in total, had indicated that they were feeling severe impacts from COVID-19 realities. At that time, about a third of them reported that they didn't believe that they would be able to stay open beyond the mandated closure through April 7th, which is truly a frightening number. Um, more concerningly, if the restrictions were extended beyond that to May 31st, only about 10% at that time thought that they could see a viable path forward for them. We know that um, cash flow, rent, and keep, keeping people employed are among the top concerns that our businesses are having. In addition to those businesses that are open, um, making sure that they're conducting their business in the safest way possible that's going to uh, slow the, any spread of flatten the curve, as we've been told again and again. So, um, Dave, I'd, I'd love to share with you the set of recommendations that we have garnered um, after, after um, aggregating the data from Union Square, East Cambridge, and Central Square, and the recommendations that we are putting forth to the state legislature. In fact, they were sent to the state legislator legislature yesterday. Does that sound, sound good? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, why, why don't you go ahead with that? Fantastic. Um, so what I've just put on the screen here, uh, can you confirm you can see that? Yes. Okay, fantastic. Is a summary statement. Union Square Main Streets will be publishing these materials in the coming days in greater context. But again, I, I wanted to give your viewers a high level 
understanding of the types of relief that we know our small businesses need. Let me just start by saying loans are not enough. As Jen pointed out, they are problematic for our mom and pop businesses, the independent businesses that give Somerville Squares its soul and its spirit. Um, and I think one of the most impactful quotes I have heard is, offering a loan to a small business right now is like offering a mortgage to an unemployed person. It's just not a viable direction to move in. So you'll see that our number one recommendation is to establish an emergency relief fund that issues grants to businesses affected by this national crisis. Um, and that small business definition would include um, nonprofits as well as um, owner occupied, owner operated businesses who are not qualifying for other programs that are out there now. It was devastating for many of our small businesses to learn that the business interruption plans that they have taken out and been paying for for times like this are not applicable in this case because those policies have fine prints which indicate that the policies are not the um, cannot respond to a virus. And so there are some national movements to um, take the insurance companies to bat on this, and that is something that we are absolutely recommending that Massachusetts get behind. Our third recommendation is to waive state, local, and meals taxes for Q1. Um, from Q1 of 2020 through 2021, we've seen versions of this relief coming forward, such as a deferral of meals tax, but we recognize that's really only um, providing some relief to restaurants and the like, and what we need is relief for businesses of all types that are impacted here. Fourth, we're recommending an emergency rent rebate tax credit program, which when this report is published uh, from Union Square Main Streets in the coming days. There'll be chapter devoted to explaining how we propose that could work. We know that it's not only rent that small businesses are up against, but also mortgage payments and commercial property owners themselves are up against these challenges. So we are advocating for mortgage relief as well. Knowing that employees are really um, such a critical aspect of our businesses and our community as a whole, advocating for expanded unemployment insurance protections. We do know some of these are coming down the pipeline and we need them to be as robust as possible. And then finally, um, institute an anti-eviction protection for commercial tenants. We know a lot of municipalities are doing this for residential tenants um, and we wanna applaud Mayor Curtitoni's interest in carrying this forward for commercial tenants. We do understand that there's some legal um, challenges in doing so, but we are advocating that in order for our businesses to have a chance to reopen, they cannot be displaced with late or missed rent payments. So we've taken these seven measures and uh, asked for business groups and associations across the state to join us in putting their voice and support to them and make them known to the state legislature. And soon we'll be asking for individual businesses and quite likely individuals to be signing on with them as well. That's, uh, that's, that's amazing work there, Jessica. And so when you, when you say present to the state legislature, is this uh, presenting, uh, are, are there, is there like a, um, a lobbying organization that you have there or are there uh, direct, uh, are there, are you reaching out to uh, individuals, state senators and representatives? Um, who, who is that being presented to? Um, yes, indeed, we have a champion um, a representative that's out of um, Cambridge, and um, I hope you'll bear with me while I put my finger on his name, since I want to be accurate with this information. During my interview, um, my board asked me, what do you think your most challenging uh, part of your new job is going to be? And my answer was, I served, in New Ham I served this role in New Hampshire for many, many years, and so I'm catching up with a lot of uh, the leaders that are in our state. But there's a representative who represents Cambridge who is I'm going to get my finger on his name, who is our, our advocate right now, and then we're waiting uh, further instruction from him. Excellent. Um, and before, before we went live, uh, Jessica, you mentioned uh, like three areas that you're um, touching on, uh, which include uh, providing information, advocacy, and promotion of businesses. And um, I'll ask you both, uh, Jessica, we'll, we'll start off with you, uh, you know, how you are 
how you're ticking those boxes and making sure that uh, you're reaching out to small businesses in this way. Thank you, Dave. Um, so in terms of resources, um, we are sending measured uh, email correspondences to our 192 businesses that we maintain contact with. We're working to vet the resources that we are sending their way um, to ensure that we understand how applicable it is to the stakeholder group that we're serving. Once those materials have been vetted, they are then being added to our, uh, here we go, our, our webpage that we have set up for businesses to be looking at for where one centralized place where folks can go for this information. So this is a page dedicated to those resources and I'll scroll so you can see that it's encouraging businesses to stay connected at the local, the city, the state and the national level. It's pointing businesses to where they can get information about things such as unemployment and deferral of different uh, taxes that are being levied or tax credits that are available. It was important for us to include mental health resources for, for businesses. Mental health and economic development need to be tied, particularly in a public health crisis in a national emergency. This particular area, I'd like to call attention to your viewers because it's a way that viewers can actually um, pitch in and make a difference. These, uh, I think I have five listed here. These are funds that are set up for um, the employees impacted primarily in the hospitality industry. And um, these links on our page are employee facing, meaning if you click on it, you know how you can apply for funding through these, or I'm sorry, you can apply for aid through these groups. But each one of these groups has a donor facing side where if a viewer of this program wanted to make a difference for a music maker for example they would be able to make a contribution so the remainder of this page um, talks about how businesses can get resourced up in terms of going online um, just this morning we were really pleased to introduce to union square a one-on-one -on -one technical assistance program where we are working with uh, a woman Katarina Liakos, who will be able to do a cost benefit analysis for restaurants in particular to determine if doing takeout is a viable option and if so, how to retool a, mem a menu to make that marketable and also as profitable as possible. So that's one way that we are working to keep our resources flowing. In order, in terms of keeping business flowing, we've turned our home pages into open during COVID-19. Um, Jen's gonna talk about her page in East Somerville and then a citywide page as well. What I'll just note here is this particular page covers more than just restaurants. You'll notice that for example, uh, B in Union, it's a yoga studio next to Market Basket is doing online classes. So this is a place where you can surf on over and uh, understand do you have need for pet care? Who's open and how to get in contact with the business so you can understand how to, how to most effectively be their patron. The last thing I just want to note on this page is a call to action for another call to action for your viewers, um, which is what could they do to help? Um, Jen already touched on this. If you're able, call for your takeout or delivery del directly to the restaurant. Um, it could help them keep up to a third of that transaction. What else can you be doing? How about write a review on Yelp or Google? We're often too busy to do something like that. If you have some extra time, that is a wonderful way to show love and support for your local business. Same with social media, cheer them on, give some comments. We know how those platforms work. It's all about the numbers. So you really can make a big difference if you're sharing with your own communities, how wonderful the takeout, whatever you just had was. The That's next thing. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Jessica. Is encouraging people to consider buying gift cards, not only for yourself, but do you have a friend, a neighbor, or an employee that you're thinking about? Send them a gift card. You can often do it electronically by March, or of course, treat yourself to a gift card. Excellent. Thank you, Jessica. And, uh, and Jen, how about on the, uh, the East Somerville side? Here, we have something very similar. Um, actually, this is going to bring you to the uh, Somerville Delivers page, which I'll talk about in a second, but let me 
Sorry, I have too many things open. Jess, you're so good at navigating. <laughs> Um, under our East Somerville Main Streets page, if you go under um, businesses, you'll see who's open for delivery and takeout. Right now, we update this uh, daily because it does change almost hourly, it seems, because um, some businesses decide to close. Um, they also have links to order online and the phone numbers to where to order. Um, I would also suggest, uh, as you know, we also have a resource page for businesses, but in terms of like promotion, um, I would also recommend that people consider prepaying for hair appointments and nail, nail appointments. It's something that um, as the businesses are closed right now and in order to keep paying some of the employees there, um, it helps if you can, if you were planning on getting your hair or nails done or um, to do pay them uh, for like like next month or for a previous appointment that's coming up that would also um, help them a little bit. And if you have things like a gym membership to just, you know, be conscientious of the those our small businesses trying to stay open and maybe just maintain the memberships where you can um, would be something I would just additionally add on recommendation. So again, similar to Jess's list, we have in East Somerville, the list of resources, the loans as they coming up, um, suggestions for employees, those service, those funds that Jess mentioned, um, all those links are under that particular page if anyone wants to find them. Um, additionally, East Somerville Main Streets, Union Square Main Streets, the Chamber of Commerce Welcome Project um, have been working together on creating a citywide page that lists the businesses that are available um, for delivery, for restaurants in particular, uh, for delivery and takeout. And you can find it at somervilledelivers.org um, where you can see um, new just today as they created this map where you can search for businesses that are listing themselves. It's an opt-in um, system. So I, I wouldn't hazard to say not everyone's listed yet, but you'll find quite a few businesses listed citywide on this website. I don't know, Jess, if you have anything to add to that statement. You know, I'm going to take, uh, I'm just going to pull back and say that there's a lot of challenge and difficulty right now around every corner and almost every hour. But once, you know, at the same time, there's also uh, bright spots, which I think Somerville delivers is a really good illustration of that, where five groups have gotten together and say, how can we work together very, very quickly um, and serve businesses across Somerville and work in partnership to do that. So thanks to our partners in joining forces with us. It, yeah, it's very impressive. Uh, just uh, get it going off on, on, on what you just said there, uh, Jessica. It's very impressive to see the speed with which uh, a website like that took shape. Uh, a lot of people are, are being forced to make very quick decisions uh, at every level here. Um, and like you mentioned, you know, some businesses unfortunately have had to, to close and we may unfortunately see even more of that before this, this is over. Um, and so just, you know, having these resources available uh, to them in, in the ways that you both mentioned uh, is really, really important. Um, and uh, I just want to uh, applaud the, the, the work and the advocacy that you're, that you're both doing. Um, is there in these last uh, these last four minutes that we have? Is there anything else that either of you want to highlight um, that we haven't touched on um, in a, in any aspect um, regarding the the uh, Main Streets organizations and and small businesses and and advocacy promotion or information that you want to get out there, uh, Jen? <laughs> um, I guess I just wanted to to just keep encouraging folks to support the small businesses in their local communities. Um, if it's, you know, picking like a day in the week to order um, takeout or delivery or, um, you know, particular small business that you love, you want to support, um, you can 
I've seen some people create virtual tip nights um, for stay at home and you can tip like your favorite bartender online. And that's really great show of community that I've been seeing come out of this. And I just encourage people to continue to be creative and thoughtful and conscientious and really understanding that um, we're in this together. So let's do whatever we can to support each other. And I really, again, thank you, Dave and um, Somerville Media Center and Jess and everyone's working really hard to try to get correct information out and working together to support people where we can. And I'm just very appreciative of that. Uh, thank you, Jen. And uh, Jessica? It's pretty hard to follow that. <laughs> support your local businesses, love Union Square. Um, I, I, you know, again, I think that's great, Jen. Find, make, make a special night with your family. This is our local night or two or three if you are able. Um, if you are a property owner and you can work with your commercial tenant, your small business tenant, um, whether that's reduced rent, it's postponed rent, waived rent, please let's keep the soul and the spirit of our community that everybody loves so much about Somerville intact to the greatest ability possible. Um, if you're somebody at home who's looking to stay connected with groups like Jen and mine, um, we both publish newsletters. So hop on to our websites. Dave, will you be able to provide links to those in the materials? Yes, I, I can provide them right now. Um, oh, beautiful. <laughs> yeah, I, um, and, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Just oh, well, and check us out on social too. Um, we are posting our businesses, tag us often. There's a lot happening and um, there's a lot of things that will bring a smile even in the midst of this incredibly uncertain time when we do stay together because we are in this together. Very well put, Jessica. Um, and just to mention those websites again, we have uh, SomervilleDelivers.com, which is a great resource as Jen pointed out. Uh, that aggregates uh, places where you can uh, order order takeout uh, and, and delivery from uh, that are open. If you want to check out, if you are a business or 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 uh, not a business and you're an individual who wants to check out the work that uh, Jen is doing, go to eastsomervillemainstreets.org and to see the work that Jessica is doing uh, and to support businesses in Union Square, go to unionsquaremain.org. Um, so thank you both for coming on. Uh, I know, uh, you know, this, this was somewhat short notice <laughs> or maybe not, uh, but, uh, watch this space. Uh, we'd love to have you again and, uh, we appreciate you, you coming on. Jessica Eshleman, Executive Director of Union Square Main Streets and Jen Atwood, Executive Director of East Somerville Main Streets. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Somerville Media Center.